Hello, 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 all, and welcome to the Fantasy and Sci-Fi Fanatics podcast. I am your host, Daniel Kubal. I have with me today a very special guest, GD Pedman. How are you today, GD? I'm still here, despite 2020 and 2021's best efforts. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. I was just thinking because I have a kid in my class named uh, JD. So my friend all day yesterday was teasing me. He goes, "Make sure you say GD and not JD." And I said, "Now that you said that to me." I said, now I'm afraid I'm going to mess it up. He kind of got in my head a little bit. So I'm glad that I didn't get it wrong. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't be personally offended anyway. I get called the wrong name about 50 times a day. So <laughs> That's fair. Um, so I'm really, we're really excited to be able to get you on. Um, you know, I've um, been following you on Twitter for a couple of years now. Um, and, you know, I bought a couple of your books, which I haven't gotten yet to read because I just got out of grad school. But uh um that's probably like the best. series <laughs> is like right on my list uh and i was really excited because you're actually going to be our first official lit rpg um author and in terms of that realm so i was really excited yeah. to uh formulate these questions for you and just kind of get your take um on this particular niche of fantasy so again really want to thank you for coming on today very happy to be here this first question, and like I said earlier before we start recording, this is what I like to always ask people. It seems to be a very popular one with the audience. So what has your writing journey been like up until this point? It has been an arduous uphill climb from the lowest point in hell up to this mighty pinnacle where I can't even see the top yet. <laughs> um, I, I started off in the gutters uh, writing uh, short fiction for tiny magazines and then I moved on to writing more commercial stuff for other people under other names. And now I'm finally writing some stuff for myself. Oh, cool. Finally. <laughs> I did not know that. So that's actually really good to know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I sort of joke with people that there's pretty good odds that they'll have one of my books somewhere in their house. It just might not have my name on it. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, so that actually uh, leads me into a, a, a sub question there. So uh, we've had quite, I've had quite a few people ask me um, just about, you know, like the ghostwriting and things like that, um, you know, if I would be interested. And I do know quite a few people that, you know, have done very well doing that. But uh, how, how does that feel, though, having, you know, helped with a project like that, but not have your name on it? I think a few of our, you know, audience viewers would like to know that answer as well. There's absolutely amazing freedom with knowing no one can associate hmm. you with a piece of crap that you've just yeah. turned out to a deadline. It's great. <laughs> that's a great point, actually. I have I've not heard that uh, perspective. So that actually, uh, yeah, that's a really good answer right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, it's paid the bills. I can't complain. Um, there's always lots of people out there who think they have an idea for a book, but don't have the actual skills to put it down. So mm. I'm more than happy to take their money from them, you know? Yeah, yeah. I had a friend, like, uh, we were talking and I was like, oh, I don't think I want to do that. And then he was like, yeah, well... He was the, my 5k check said otherwise <laughs> I think he was uh you know he was uh like 20 23 days in from project start to finish and I was just like man you know like I coach sports and things I was like that's more than I get for almost you know almost two coaching seasons and I was like well I was teasing my wife I said well, well maybe I will try that and you know try and, you know go that route <laughs> I mean it beats a real job let's be honest <laughs> everything's a real job to get paid for it, right? That's what I just heard about, <laughs> a quote from the other day from a TV show my wife and I were watching. I was like, I don't know about that. She, so her and I were kind of discussing the merits of that. And so I said, well, writing's probably really up there for that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can sell everyone around you on the fact that you sitting and staring out the window thinking about dragons is actually a job, then, uh, you know, you're onto a winner. <laughs> yeah, I consider you like on the top of the pedestal there. Then I consider you having the trophy and the, the number one. <laughs> like That's like, I was just talking to Sean Bell about that. Like, I think that's really like all of our dreams at this point is that, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, and well, I was just talking to Scott Oden about that too our second interview I said isn't it so weird that um and he made a comment you know where and we kind of discussed that a little bit uh, you know where it's like you literally get paid to you know put your thoughts down and you create this product like literally out of nothing and it's uh you know it's a pretty cool uh, uh you know thing there's not a lot of things like writing I think out there you know like art's one of those things too where it's like really cool to you know you have this idea in your head and you actually put it down and you know people can actually see it but I think it's, different. Oh, it's witchcraft. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it is. It literally is though. That's actually a, a really good point. Like it literally is witchcraft. It's magic. It's yeah. It's whatever you want to call it. It's yeah. It's uh, it's definitely something unique. So that's a great point. 
Uh, for that second one, I was curious at how has your writing been influenced by games? Because I was checking out your Goodreads and um, website and things like that. So I really liked your Goodreads description. So if anybody has a chance to check uh, GDs out, please go do that. It was awesome. Kind of made me think of how I wanted to do my own profile really soon. Uh, but I was curious at how your writing has been influenced by games such as World of Warcraft, Elder Scrolls, Boulder's Gate, of course. Um, oh, I know I've played a lot of games. influences. <laughs> it's an amazing game. <laughs> Trilla Julie Lynn. Um, I'm not sure how much they've influenced it more than they've just sort of shaped my brain in the way that I understand how stories go together. Mm. Um, I mean, we talk about the writing in some of these video games and I'm going to try and find a polite way to say it's atrocious. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I yet I'm still completely engaged and in love with the story. So, you yeah. know, they're obviously doing something right. It just shows that things don't have to be highbrow to be worth enjoying. <laughs> No, no, I totally agree. I, I just always found it interesting. Um, so like Boulder's Gate, for instance, right? So there's that, like, I love, I love the computer games and the expansion packs. And um, I absolutely love like Dark Alliance 1 and 2 um, for the PlayStation 2. Um, I just, it's interesting because like I, go, I went back and played Boulder's Gate recently for PC. And I know some people probably hang me for this, but I was just kind of like, okay, so why is Cerevic really doing this again? <laughs> like, you know, like, why are we stopping the, you know, the iron ore shipments, uh, you know, shipments from Am? And, you know, it just, it, it just became kind of interesting to actually go back through and analyze that story from a writer's perspective um, rather yes. than as a fan's perspective. You see, it works absolutely fine if you're coming to it from a D and D background, because if you're coming from the D and D background, you know that the DM started off with a completely different plot, and you just kept on going, "No, no, it's that bald guy over there. He's the bad guy. His name's spelled backwards. It's Saravok." You know, it. <laughs> no, it's... players players make jumps you're not expecting, and I, I feel like that's reflected quite well in the story there. <laughs> it's actually true. I didn't, never considered that before, but yeah, that's that's totally true. Um, but listen, I, I had a D and D game completely derailed a wee while ago because the players decided, hold on, that lord is wearing a hat. The bad guy was wearing a hat. That must mean it's him. Oh man! And then the murder hobos uh, got at it. And <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, it was convenient for them that it was him, but still, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I love with a game I'm running right now. I was um, yeah, a couple things um happen and then I was like oh I was like speaking of like a writer's perspective uh from the like, dms I was like oh I said actually you know I said that actually is a lot cooler than what I was thinking so I have a little bit more uh retooling and I used a couple old parts and things but yeah they uh, uh my friend asked goes did we just ruin your entire campaign I said no actually I said you just made it better I said I just think you guys will you know enjoy a couple of these things a little bit more but yeah <laughs> I I find it interesting because like um like I always think of like Diablo 2 um mm. that one for me like I don't know I I was just talking to um to Sean and Scott about this like I really like this one artist near me Jonathan Myers if anybody has a second to look him up um he's a local area um, um Ithaca next to me I think he lives in Syracuse now and him and I used to see each other at shows a lot and things and his style of um uh just like black and white with pen was just brilliant and it always made me really want to do like a graphic novel and kind of do like a dungeon crawler kind of thing um like Diablo with him and then I kind of come up with a storyline that I thought really fit and him and I were supposed to start talking about it and then of course the pandemic happened and you know project shift and things like that but I always yeah. want to go back to that but yeah it's it's always interesting I think when you kind of look back onto certain video games and things and I don't know. I, I feel like that one always, like I started to play that one before I really got into reading fantasy. Um, and mm -hmm. I think it kind of set a, a grim, dark expectation, I think. And <laughs> by the way, I like Conan a lot more than some other things, but. Yep. <laughs> I think they are a good gateway drug to a lot of different genres. I mean. Great way to put it. I, I can't imagine how many people got into sci-fi from playing Halo or how many got into fantasy from playing World Warcraft or whatever else. And, you know, I'm just happily providing them with the middle step so they can still be playing a game while reading a book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's a, a really good way to put it, too. Um, yeah, that, I think that's a fabulous way to put it. And I think that's what, you know, why it makes, you know, that type of genre um, for lit RPG. So, you know, and like a lot of people were just talking about this for our, um, for our group. And I was talking about, you know, having you on and stuff. And they're like, oh, that's really cool. You know, they're like, well, 
maybe, you know, you can get some insight into turning this type of, you know, a campaign into a novel or something. And I'm like, well, we're playing in my own fantasy world. So maybe, but, you know, yeah, I think that's, um, I think that's a really good way to look at it actually. Because I've had a couple of people ask me, you know, like, what's the difference? And I said, I don't know, I'll ask GD and we'll figure it out. But I think that's a great quote. So we're gonna have to quote you on that one. It's, it's almost as if I get paid to put words in order or something, you know? I know, right? It's crazy how that works. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually really curious just because like a lot of people do not say Boulder's Gate for some reason as being like, oh, like me. Uh, so I was actually <laughs> curious, what was your favorite thing about uh, either Boulder's Gate, the first game or just the series in general? Oh, it's the characters. And I've, f- I've found that moving into the modern generation of games as well. I don't actually give that much of a crap about the game i'm much more interested in the people that i'm chatting with like uh dragon age inquisition the mm-hmm. actual plot is not the best let's say politely but you're surrounded by this cast of characters who i was rushing home every day to get on the computer and hang out with these people again you know yeah yeah, yeah. no i i, I was, yeah and very much the same with Baldur's gate i mean every single side character was just fantastic mm-hmm. from start to finish I mean, don't get me wrong, there's some of them you hate, but in an entertaining way, you know, you love to hate them. It's <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I got to say, um, oh, no, I'm going to totally blank on Tahira's husband's name. I was not sad to see him go. Believe, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he just always seemed like he was the most annoying guy in the first one, and, <laughs> and then in the books, too. I was just like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was, I was not sad to see him go, but yeah, there's, yeah, I, um, should we I, be doing a spoiler warning for a game that came oh, out? Oh, sorry. 90s? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if we have to. Well, maybe maybe we should. I'll put, I'll put one in there just in case. It's, <laughs> my friend was talking about that the other day for another game. And he was like, yeah, because I said that and he, I was joking. And he goes, yeah, from a 20-year-old game. And I'm like, but, <laughs> I said, but we have younger people now that are listening. You know, I said, we're just discovering them on, you know, the, the refurbished PlayStation, you know, ones and things like that. You know, and I, I said, it's one of those things. But uh, yeah, we'll put a spoiler warning in there for him. <laughs> um, well, I just was curious because, like, I think you made a good point because I really like the warders um, in the first Dragon Age. I just thought that just was, I don't even know if it was the characters, but just the, you know, that class in general, I thought mm. was really, was really interesting. Um, it reminded me a lot of Tolkien's, you know, Rangers um, and a couple different games that came out around the same time for, you know, PlayStation 2 and um, and Xbox, but like, I think it was like the original, like one ring game or whatever. It was really cool. Mm-hmm. It was like turn-based, but yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely like the, just that class in general, but. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's your whole narrative arc condensed down into one character, isn't it? It's like, okay, we become part of the bad thing so they can beat the bad thing and we make the sacrifices and there's a chance of death and it's all condensed down into a five minute quest where you go get some blood from a field and then come back and drink it, you know? Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a, yeah, I've always really enjoyed those games, you know, Baldur's Gate just cause, and I like the dark Alliance ones too, because I feel like there were a lot of just very interesting people. Um, I won't spoil, but you know, there's different people in the first one where I was just like, <laughs> like something happens at the end and somebody would like does this thing to you. And I, I, to this day, I've, I've never looked at friends or acquaintances since um, in the same light because I just assumed they're going to betray me in the same way. So <laughs> I said to somebody, my, my buddy the other day, uh, I, he kind of made her, I put up a random meme about something like that. And he goes, you know, I said the person's name in the game. He goes, he can't hurt us anymore. <laughs> He's like, we beat him up, you know, like we beat both games and they you are know, together. And I'm like, I know, I said, it still stinks sometimes, but... <laughs> It was, there's a wound in your heart that will never heal yeah <laughs> yeah exactly yeah might as well be a nascar cool blade you know and just go right through there <laughs> <laughs> i should ask have you seen the new dark alliance game that they've come out with uh you know what um my friend i believe my friend just bought it or is buying it um before i go um back up to michigan for christmas break so we're gonna do like a guy's night and just try to kind of blast through it all <laughs> as much as we can <laughs> um in uh in about a day going over there i'm about to go over there on like a sunday uh during break where we don't really have anything going on <laughs> we're literally just gonna grab pizza like we did old school and uh you know play from the morning and then try and get as far as we can as old men now which probably isn't going to be in the two and four <laughs> morning as it used to be <laughs> it gets to about 10 o'clock you start yawning and stretching <laughs> yeah yeah i was like i don't even know if i could you know sit or you know or lay on my stomach for that long i definitely know i can't lay on my stomach for that long anymore with my back so i was teasing i was like you have to get some orthopedic shoes and chairs and stuff like orthopedic game chairs and 
we talked about maybe um, doing a line of those, <laughs> you know, for, for our generation. And <laughs> get, get some compression gloves on so you can keep playing without your hands cramping out. Yeah, Just... yeah exactly. <laughs> Got to get a compression suit so you can keep playing. So I feel like we used to just sit there for hours, you know, with, I don't even remember. There was just like, a, oh, Champions and NORAP for PlayStation 2. And Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it'd be like the four of us and we get over my friend green TV, you know, we're at sections of, you know, into the fours and yeah, it was just, or Halo, you know, like I remember we used to like be in the same house and they used to have two different internet connections uh, and we would literally be on one screen with, you know, two people and then the other two would, or we do four or four and run tournaments <laughs> with LAN, there are the LANs and everything. Yeah, those, those parties were the best. <laughs> my oh, absolutely. Like, He's like, we need to go back and do those again as adults. I'm like, I know, right? I'm like, we have more money and, you know, less time now, but I feel like it'd be more fun than it used to be. So I, I don't know. There, I think a lot of it's nostalgia. I think if you had to pick up your computer and carry it under one arm to your friend's house now, you'd probably rethink it. <laughs> no, that's, that's actually really good. It probably is nostalgia. I think a lot of those, you know, but I think that's what I liked most about going and playing Boulder Skate again. It, you know, it wasn't even the game i think it was more the nostalgia of discovering fantasy um because really like boulder's gate was the first game well besides diablo 2 and i discovered them pretty much at the same time like i couldn't actually support diablo 2 for a while on my computer at my parents house and so but boulder's gate i could um so that one really got me through and then eventually i was able to play diablo 2 and you know get a better computer but i really think that i really think boulder's gate in general because i don't think i like fantasy as much as i do um, without that or Diablo 2. So yeah, I think a lot of it is nostalgia. But absolutely. I'm, yeah, I'm wondering if that's really for me lit RPG or Grim Dark Fantasy in general. Like if you know if it's just nostalgia or you know, I don't know, it's well, kind I of do, to think about. I, I do hear from a lot of lit RPG readers who are, you know, they don't have enough time to game now. They're listening to audiobooks as they're driving to work. And this is a way for them to still have those experiences without being able to have those experiences. Um, actually a fair chunk of uh, long haul truckers and things are really mm. very into lit RPG as well, where they've gone from gamers to sitting somewhere where you cannot take your eyes off the road. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's actually uh, yeah, that's a really good point that I had not considered before. I think that, yeah, because I, I had a couple of um, lit RPGs that I was reading and um, particularly during the pandemic and, you know, we were gaming online, but gaming online you know is the same as getting together with your friends in a room and yeah. and gaming so yeah i think that's actually a, a really good point about the genre uh in particular i think it's something that people should think about too you know when when writing the genre so that's actually that's a really good point man we're we're, we're doing a really good job guys this week let me tell you it's really <laughs> great every guest has said something that's just been like really profound so that's, we're gonna put that on for you gd and uh we're gonna put that as another quote so Good stuff. Well, w one of the things that was sort of drilled into me when I was first started writing the lit RPG was you're not just writing a game, uh, writing a book, you're also designing a game that people are going to have to want to play. The, mm -hmm. the reader is going to want to have to imagine that they're going through the same scenario and they have to understand the choices you're making and why you're making them and all the rest of it. Yeah, I think that's, that's a really good thing to consider that I had not thought of before. Because I'll, I'll be honest, a lot of these books, as I'm reading them, you do want to be playing the game. <laughs> oh, yeah, and yeah. obviously the technology is just not there for full immersion VR or whatever else these uh, books are promising. But some of them just sound really fun, honestly. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a good point. Yeah, like, I think that should be, you know, really one of your goals, right? I mean, like, we always talk about, um, I don't know, I've talked to a couple of people recently about this. Like, Mallory Kuhn and I were talking about um you know like her book um among thieves and i'm doing like a heist novel like fantasy heist and um we were just talking about that you know like you really want to be in that person's shoes you know running the rooftops and you know doing the assassin's creed thing or you know or the, just the thrill of um you know like the heist going right or how to you know correct it when it's going wrong and those kinds of things and you know we really try to you know help you experience those people those characters lives but yeah, I feel like the RPG is a little bit different where, like you mentioned, where you're really trying to, yeah, trying to give people the experience of the game and, yeah, like well, the world. The, the other thing I quite like about it is there's no fudging of numbers. It's, mm. um, 
I mean, we talk about soft magic systems and hard magic systems yeah. in fantasy a lot. And this, I mean, Lit RPG just sort of sits right off the edge of the hard where everything's broken down into, you know, this fireball will do 60 damage. They have got 70 health. You know, it, it's all very clear and there's no way to get around that as long as you're keeping track of your numbers properly and not, you know, forgetting that someone leveled up halfway through the book. Yeah. <laughs> Which definitely has never happened to me. <laughs> not once, right? Not once. <laughs> not, not even once. <laughs> That's interesting. You gave me a lot to think about so far today. I like to go back through um, my own episodes and I've been taking notes and things. And this is one uh, in particular uh, area that like the people are asking me, I'm like, I don't have a lot of experiences. I've only read probably like, you know, you know, other, other than the Dungeons and Dragons, um, those smaller novels from, oh, I think it was like um, maybe like the early 2000s. I read like every single one of those when 3.5 came out. And they're literally just stories about, you know, different characters um, like Regar, the fighter and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and they had just different classes. They were great reads. They were quick. But yeah, they were, I have to say, other than those, though, I've only read probably in recent times, like three lit RPGs. Uh, yeah, so when people are asking, I'm like, I don't know. I was like, let, you know, let me ask GD and, you know, we'll, we'll kind of figure it out from there, <laughs> like together. So. Oh, um, when, when I first started out writing the RPG, the, the trend was um, for the sort of VR thing where you had people going in and playing a game and they had stakes mm -hmm. in the game and they had stakes outside the game. And I kind of loved that as well. The fact that there were two levels of storytelling going on and you could have someone who was one character in one world and completely different in the other one but you could see the point where they connected. And now the lit RPG is tending more towards a sort of, um, if, if you watched anime, you've got the isekai genre where it's, you know, a normal person ends up trapped in a fantasy world and yeah, yeah. having to deal with things that way. So that that's more of what is being written now. But I, I do sort of miss that, um, that dual story that you used to have. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. That's like kind of reminds me of uh, oh, I'm gonna totally blank. Uh, like R.A. Salvatore has that world, right? Where like the um, it's either I think it's either the Navy or the submarine ship, um, where they actually get trapped. Like they're like dive. It must be the submarine because they're diving down, um, and they basically get caught in like a wormhole sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. and then they go into uh this one fantasy world. And I was reading like the first book, and yeah, it was very interesting. Um, because I had never read anything like that before where you know i've seen movies and things like that where you know like i always think of like back to the uh, like that warriors of virtue with like the kangaroo warriors that tried to be like our <laughs> rangers you know and like that kid went through like the wormhole and stuff and you know it's basically a you know a modern day person you know in this fantasy world so yeah that's uh Oh, I, I think it's fun because you get to poke fun at a lot of the fantasy stuff as well um uh my my series i'm writing at the moment savage dominion is um it's very much someone from our world who's being punted over into a fantasy one mm. and he gets to make a lot of pithy comments that someone that had grown up in a fantasy world could not make <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting i have to check that out that sounds awesome <laughs> uh, um, so we talked a little bit about it but um here's this next question so what is it about lit rpg that made you really choose this genre um, well, I've written a lot for games in the past, um, tabletop mm, games, and I've got folders and folders and folders of magic systems that have never been used, and this is someplace I can put them and make some money off all the work I put into. No, um, <laughs> I, again, well. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just really enjoy it, honestly. Um, it's been the first genre where no matter which book I'm picking up, I'm finding something I love in it, mm. and I'm... I'm going to be honest here it's kind of like popcorn books as well like there, there's not one of them that isn't entertaining as you're going yeah. through it it's it's fun from start to finish and i understand that again it's not necessarily all like that there, there are definitely serious stories being told and yeah all the rest of it but i'm noticing a distinct trend in general fantasy towards either the grimdark stuff or the very literary stuff and yeah. I feel like it's leaving a lot of people. I mean, imagine Hollywood stop making action movies and yeah. only, you know, and just cut everyone that enjoys action movies out of it. It's no wonder people are jumping over to the RPG to get oh, yeah. the same enjoyment they used to get in the 80s and the 70s and all the rest of it from those older books. No, it's, I mean, it's totally true. I mean, that's what like um, um, Mark Timoney are talking about um, with his book, you know, like The Blood of the Spear and 
um, you know, him and I discussed that, you know, where, you know, like I, he's like, so explain to me. So him and I met a few, like quite a few times separately, um, um, like around a few interviews we did and we were discussing, he's like, well, so where do you want to fit? He's like, I like to fit, you know, for those dragon lands, you know, that wheel of time, forgotten realms. I said, I don't even really want to do the wheel of time stuff. No offense to anybody. I said, I really just want to fill that niche. Um, you know, a fun fantasy that's engaging with great characters and cool world building. And I really just want to fill the Forgotten Realms and Dragonlance kind of void. Yeah. Um, so the books where people fun. have fun and enjoy themselves and come away from it feeling good about themselves. Yeah, yeah that's that yeah. sounds like a good thing to be doing with your life, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, my friend mentioned, he's like, oh, it sounds like a popcorn book. I said, well, you know what? I said, I have a whole, you know, shelf over there of just Forgotten Realms novels. I'm like, and... You know, I had a, quite a few people get a hold of me in the last couple of days because I um, helped quite a few friends in this one group, you know, find other ones. And I'm like, people love them, you know, and I, I think it's a shame that, you know, like those in Dragonlands like haven't continued. Um, you know, I know it's a lot harder nowadays, you know, for those print books, but, you know, it's, I think it's a shame, you know, and I think uh, that's really what I like to look for more. And, you know, I have not gotten as many of those stories. So I'm glad that you, you know, I've said that about, you know, different lit RPGs because, I was just talking to a friend of mine. I said, I think that's more where I'm going to have to start reading, you know, to get more of that kind of fantasy flavor of what I'd like. So, well, come on over. We've got people with their boobs falling out and dragons and you, you name it. It's there. <laughs> well, I was just excited for your book one um, for Strata because I, as soon as I saw that cover, I was just like, yes, please. And then I read the blurb and um, yeah, I grabbed that one right away. And I actually just won a, um, a gift card. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if I have a little bit of a cabal with the, uh, <laughs> the independent um, bookstore owner there. So this is like the second thing I won. I won the Mark of Kings uh, a little while back signed. And then I won this. I said, hmm, it's kind of fishy because I'm down there all the time and they know me by name and site. Um, and they know my Instagram account. <laughs> and my wife like put my name in. I thought, oh, okay. And then she's like, well, what are you going to get? I was like, well, maybe, you know, GD's next book or one of those. I said, I definitely, definitely would like a, a you know, a lit RPG. So yeah, we'll have to just start buying all of those. So no harm, no foul there, right? Yep. Well, there there should be plenty to keep you occupied. There's yeah. <laughs> friggin' hundreds of them, so you'll yeah, find something yeah. you like. <laughs> yeah, we'll get we'll get something good. We'll get something good. <laughs> uh, for the next question, I was curious at what advice you would give those trying to break through into the lit RPG genre. Uh, you see, it's quite tricky because lit RPG is not like most established genres where you've got the obvious, you know, submissions and agents yeah. and all the rest of it. I mean, the vast majority of lit RPG is self-published. Um, there's one or two publishers, but they're basically just authors that have done well for themselves and they're trying to help other people along more than their publishers. So a lot of the advice that's usually applicable just doesn't apply here. Um, oh, yeah. If you're really wanting to write get into writing lit rpg your best thing to do is play a lot of video games play some more video games and stop being competition for me no um play a lot of video <laughs> games <laughs> read go play skyrim 10 times all right yes go play skyrim 10 times then you're qualified to talk to me no um <laughs> <laughs> you can't say go play skyrim 10 times it doesn't have an end it really doesn't no. Well, I'm just trying to get rid of your competition for you. Well, I would have appreciated it, but no, the, the, they'll catch on to us because they're gamers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, um, you, you really need to know games. You need to know enough about game design to make it look like you know what you're doing. Um, obviously, I've, I've got a little foot up in that compared to some of the authors, but the vast majority of people, you wouldn't know it because they literally sit down and they write out the entire system from top to bottom. So yeah, you have to like maths more than a normal author, I guess. <laughs> um, and then it's really just a matter of getting the book written, spending an exorbitant amount of money on a beautiful picture to go on the front of it without too much skin showing because Amazon will kick you off if you do that. Yeah. And then it's pretty much just jumping into the reddits and facebook groups and all the rest of it because it's a genre that lives and breathes entirely on word of mouth yeah which is also kind of nice compared to i mean i mean i've been published in other genres as well where it's all about the sort of prestige publishing it's about getting them in papers and all the rest of it and that's i mean that's almost a mark against you in the rpg if if you look too polished then the readers sort of sniff a little bit at the book and go hmm. is this just someone trying to sneak into our genre and take some money <laughs> 
Yeah, it's interesting. It's <laughs> it's a weird one. Um, I think it's just because it's such a young genre and everyone's very protective of it at the moment. Yeah. But um, at the same time, God, it's fun. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the community is probably the most active I've seen out of any reading community in the world. I mean, ever. <laughs> and I, I, I've, I've been I've, yeah. I've been through them all since like the. Like since the eighties with the old BBS boards and all the rest of it, I've I've seen every writing community going, and these people are they're hyped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was just interesting talking to a buddy of mine, just uh, you know about the genre in general, and you know he had given me um, actually I believe that he gave me your name um, was one, and then like, a couple other authors um, just to check out, and I hadn't even you know really heard of the RPG. Um, until I started following you and a couple other authors on Twitter, uh, which I thought was interesting because I talked to so many fantasy authors like in a day, like I probably talked to, you know, 12 a day and, you know, I'm on all sorts of forums and things. And I just thought it was so funny. And so he said, well, if you want to know really who to read, he um, sent me one of the Reddits. Um, and I just kind of started diving in there. And I, but I just thought it was so interesting that then I was trying to, you know, look, this is probably like three years ago, I tried to look some things up and there really wasn't a lot like really anywhere else on the genre itself. So for me, it was a, a very interesting learning curve. Um, yeah. Where I then um, had to go talk to people. Well, I mean, we are definitely the unloved bastard stepchild of fantasy. So it's, it makes sense that no one was talking about us then. And honestly, I'm, I'm constantly amazed that no one's talking about us now. So it's nice. I, it's crazy when you actually look, you know, like I was just talking to somebody. So when you actually look at sales of, you know, certain authors and things, I'm like, and when you talk to certain authors just in general about like, you know, what they like and don't like about what they're currently writing. And I had said to a couple of us, we could say, maybe you should actually be writing the RPG <laughs> instead of, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, I just feel like everybody's doing grimdark now. It's just like, oh, you know, and I, my buddy, he kind of insulted me the other day on accident when I was talking to, about, you know, some things that happened in my novel. And he was like, oh, that's so grimdark. I'm like, oh. I'm like, well, I'm not trying to be. I said, it just happens to be, you know, this story. And he was talking about the world and he's like, oh, well, kind of a grimdark world at times. And I'm like, well, I said, well, you know, Robert E. Howard is, you know, other than Tolkien, my favorite. So I said, it's probably just his influence, you know, shining through. But I have a lot yeah, of- let, let's, let's blame Bob. That's a good shout. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. I was, teasing, I was like, I have a lot of cool things that, you know, aren't grim dark. And, uh, but yeah, I said, I think it's just, um, I said, I think at a certain point, you just, you get older and you, you're, you you know, you're more realistic, you know, with character development and, you know, and, and you, what the stories are. You are, but I think it's also difficult to write super upbeat stuff when the entire planet's on fire all the time as well. <laughs> so true. Like, I mean, it's the the economy is on fire. We've all got the plague. It, yeah. th this is basically a grim dark plot we're living through. So it's not surprising yeah. that that's where pe the writers are going. Yeah, yeah. And I, like, no matter what country you're in, it seems like, um, yeah, these uh, crazy maniacal, um, you know, just I, these old ideas. Like I was just talking, because we're teaching the slavery unit in my history class, and we're talking about these old ideas, and I'm just like, oh. You know, and we had a lot of things that had popped up, you know, with current events and things. So the kids were talking about it. And, you know, one of them just they kind of made a comment. He's like, no matter what country, you know, you were in in the pandemic. He's like, it seems like, you know, these particular people were coming out of the woodwork, you know, and I'm like, well, they never really left. Unfortunately, I said, unfortunately, that's, yeah. you know, our world. But yeah, I think that's where part of that energy lately has come from is, you know, you have to, you know, fight with people off of these. <laughs> like I was talking to a friend of mine and here in the United States, it's definitely become a thing. And sorry if anybody um, doesn't want to talk about it, but it's like where there are these, you know, like civil rights ends up now being a political thing. And I'm like, no, that's just like basic human decency, <laughs> you know? And I had a parent get upset the other day and she was like, well, you're teaching my kid this democratic thing. And I'm like, no, I'm actually just teaching about slavery. And I'm like, I'm really sorry if you don't like it. And then, you know, we were talking about equal rights and you know, we have a lot of people, you know, not just in our country. Personally but, offended by the idea of it. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. Just because you don't like that person or who they are or what they are. I'm just like, give me a break, you know. And, but that's where, like, I was talking to a buddy of mine um, the other day in the writing community. And, you know, we were both, you're both teachers, you know. And I was also talking to Sean Crow about this, too. It just seemed like, you know, we're really getting bogged down lately. And him, Sean and I discussed that um, in a private conversation of, you know, really having to pull back, um, you know, from, letting too much of that seep into our writing um so it's just kind of a 
kind of an interesting takeaway that I think you actually made a good point for is, you know, it's great to put everything on fire, but uh, I like my books to actually, you know, be people are putting out the fires at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> I, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to someone putting out all the fires. That's, we've got our fingers crossed for that. I, know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's been rough. And yeah. yeah, the UK is obviously a very different situation from over there, but we, we've got our own idiots um <laughs> there's no short we saw, we saw it coming out of the woodwork i feel like i think that yeah it's just it's just been an interesting uh yeah my, my dad said that he's like god oh, he goes i thought we got rid of most of these idiots you know or they they moved or you know or grew up or something i'm like no they're still here i said i think social media and stuff just makes it you know now they just feel like it's more apparent or they have to speak or something but yeah it's interesting when you know i was like discussing this one scene in my book and you know, my friend, he goes, I would just cut it out. He goes, I think the only thing you're trying to do is like, you know, uh, I made it like a private scene then, you know, he's like, I think you're just trying to get out some of this frustration from, you know, the pandemic. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, you're totally right. So I actually just took it out and then wrote it as therapy for myself, you know, just like, <laughs> you know, writing therapy. But yeah, there were some things that I had to get out. And then I went back, you know, and I'm glad he said that because then he's like, this doesn't fit here. And then I went back and, you know, actually was able to write the story. And you know, and finish up the first draft. And I felt like I told him, I was like, thank you so much for, you know, telling me what I needed to hear and not what I wanted to hear. Um, Oops, a little bit too much of my soul out there. Back into yeah. your job. <laughs> that's, exactly, that's exactly what Clayton Snyder and um, Michael R. Fletcher were just discussing the other day. I'm like, or I guess it was a couple months ago, but I just listened to the other day on Ben Galley's uh, um, <laughs> uh, um, Fantasy Lounge. And yeah, like Mike was like, oh, yep, let too much of the demons out. <laughs> I feel like that's definitely what I did. So when I was listening to the, Ben's old episode, I was like, God, that's so me with this chapter and this one character. So I actually completely cut out one character because I was just like, I felt my, my friend goes, you could just name that character COVID and everybody would understand like what was going on there. So yeah, it was, it was very interesting, but um, in terms of this next one, um, you kind of already gave a little bit of advice. Uh, what advice would you give those trying to break into the lit RPG genre? Um, we talked about games. Is there anything else that you would recommend in particular or like a particular, um, you know, like uh, we were talking about that um, as a two-part question, my buddy and I the other day, and he had said, um, for instance, like he recommended like reading a lot in the genre. Um, but then there were a couple things where he was like, this is what not to do. So I was curious if um, there was something that people should not do. You kind of mentioned it with, you know, like maybe not writing to market maybe as much or uh, it's, it's being an imposter. Because... <laughs> <laughs> it, it's really difficult when we talk about the whole writing to market thing, because people are so fed up with the generic guy oh, yeah. who's every man who's taken to a fantasy world and is suddenly the best at everything and it's it's honestly very boring to me and I bounce off a lot of the sort of more popular books in the genre because of that and then I go scurrying around and find the ones about teachers who on the weekends play video games to sell the loot that they get as a kobold necromancer so that they can pay for school supplies and shit like this i mean there's <laughs> i like the i, know I, I, I like <laughs> what's weird you know i, yeah, I like yeah. the the outer fringe of the genre so i know that isn't always particularly helpful to um authors coming in because uh, I, I'll be recommending them all the books that are not doing very well but that I really enjoyed they could be the next one though you know like I feel like you know I do feel that if you really if you really look back and like Scott and I were talking about this with Conan you know like if you really look back you know with like the Savage Sword and things like that like and I think people think that he was an overnight success and that's not the case. And, you know, he was literally like Tolkien coming up with this entirely new genre and, you know, in, in Howard's case, it was this entirely new subgenre. Um, you know, that only a couple other people at the time historically were really writing. And, you know, I, I think a couple people, you know, think of, you know, we were talking about, um, Dirk Ash and I were talking about this for urban fantasy, like, you know, so he's got, you know, his series Paternus and, I don't know if I would really call that urban fantasy. I feel like I would call that mythological fantasy. And well, it's you know, that's like, the problem. The, the the genre was never that clear. I mean, it started yeah. off as horror was what yeah, the genre yeah, was yeah. filed under. And then yeah. it just sort of drifted and drifted and drifted until we've ended up with this sort of pseudo paranormal romance genre, which is where it seems to be what everyone considers paranormal, um, sorry, urban fantasy. Yeah. And it's so funny to me because I, I've written urban fantasy as well, where it's, 
I mean, it's just a fantasy story that happens to be in a contemporary setting, which yeah. is very much what I feel like Paternus is as well. It's very much you're taking these mythological characters and bringing them to now, but the time isn't that relevant in Paternus, if that makes sense. No, yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost like it's for familiarity more than anything else. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, I think it's a great point. I just, yeah, I, and yeah, I, I think urban fantasy is like a great, you know, example of that. And I, you know, I was discussing with a couple of people on forums that I think, I do think, you know, like when you're talking about fringes, I, to me now, I'm very similar. I, I want to look at something that I'm, I'm so tired of the, like, I love Luke Skywalker, but I read him for, you know, over a decade and thousands of stories. And it's like, I just, I'm, I don't want to do that anymore. Um, you know, and I just think that there's, there's so many people out there that are coming up with different ideas. Um, you know, like the coward, for instance, is, is a great book, you know, where that's the case, right. Taking that, you know, traditional, um, you know, fantasy story of the hero and turn it on its head. And that's, I just think, uh, that's Stephen. Yeah, Aaron, Stephen you know? Aaron, yeah. Like, I just think that, things like that to me like when I found that book in person at this independent bookstore that's my favorite um we near my mother-in-law where she lives in that town I just I picked it up instantly and I'm setting that up there's just a lot of those type of books that I'm setting up for January and next year because I realized this year I'm not reading a lot and I think it's because I'm burnt out on the same fantasy stories um I've read a lot more indie but which has helped um otherwise I want to be reading at all um, but again, they're, you know, like Clayton Snyder's River of Thieves. I just, mm. I'm loving it. <laughs> I just love Clayton's writing. And, you know, that, so, that book is a trip. It really is. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, in the sense of you took some acid, then you picked up a book and that's Clayton's yeah. book. <laughs> it really is. And I feel like, um, you know, when him and I had our interview, I, I was saying to him, I was like, this is nuts. And I was like, but I loved it. And I'm, you know, <laughs> about to be done this week. And I'm just, I, I, and that's where I'm also thinking like, well, Maybe with this gift card, like, you know, I was like, I'll get a lit RPG and then I'll get like, you know, Demon's Inc. or something like that, or, you know, Neuroscope Groans or something. And, you know, and that's what my friend, he's like, well, if you like that, he's like, you're going to love, you know, Fletcher's Beyond Redemption or Blackstone Heart, which I got both of those two. And I just, I think I need things like that. And, you know, I think also like, you know, we're saying like, I think I really need, you know, lit RPG right now. I just think that I need something beyond you know the ordinary you can only read so many fantasy stories where the same type of arcs and things happen until eventually you're just Absolutely. like want to call and again book. traditional publishing is so married to just producing the same book with a different hat on every year and i'm yeah i i can't remember the last time that i really jumped into a traditionally published fancy book and enjoyed it the way that i would like to i mean again you'll get the odd weird and wonderful little one that will catch my fancy but yeah Honestly, I don't think anyone's been reading that much these last couple of years. I think it's... <laughs> I, I know, I totally agree with you. I'm trying to think. I think the only traditionally published, you know, novel that I, which I didn't even really like, like not trying to be rude or anything. I just didn't really like this, uh, the story, but I loved how it was written and I loved the characters was, um, oh, Mercedes Lackey and James Mallory. And I was reading, I think it was The Phoenix Endangered. Um, mm. And like, you know, <laughs> Like they're, you know, they're going about doing all these things and it's like, you don't even really get to the villain or, you know, they don't meet or anything. And, um, in the first book, so spoilers, but it's just like, but the characters themselves were amazing and the character development was amazing. And the, the prose itself, like I just flew through it and I loved it and I wanted to get to book two just for that. But it, um, yeah, it, it, that's one of the only ones and, you know, for a totally different reason that I enjoyed you know, versus some of these other traditionally published that I try to pick up. I kind of honestly just kept putting them back down um, because I, again, I, you know, Joe Abercrombie is, you know, amazing, obviously, and Brandon Sanderson, but, and Patrick Rothfuss, but I just think that now everybody's trying to, you know, to be like them in traditional publishing and, you know, they already have. That's, I've, I've seen so many mimics of them coming yeah. and going. And I mean, I will say that the Patrick Rothfuss mimics have definitely got one up on him because they actually finished their books. But apart from that, um, there's nothing really new being done there. Yeah. So what's the point? What's what's the point of reading a book where you're not getting any new experience out of it? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, or <laughs> it's just a regurgitation of the same character that somebody just did. It's just like, you know, okay, um, we're getting we're getting too we're getting too morose here. Pair up, right? What's the next question? Where are we? <laughs> okay, so I want, but I do want to I do want to go back to that point though of indie authors and you know just mm. in general. And I I really feel like so many people. I was just talking to Scott Odin about this, 
um, uh, last weekend. And I really do feel like I just have become an indie person, you know, and, and lover of indie fantasy and even sci-fi too, which usually I struggle with sci-fi at times, mm. unless it's a particular type of story. But like, there's just so many people, especially this year and last year, it's like, like, I don't, I don't make enough money at my teaching job to buy everybody's book, but I wish I did because, you know, because there's just so many people doing so many great things. And I hear people all the time, they're like, oh, you read fantasy? Like, oh, you read sci-fi? And I'm like, well, I'm like, you need to just give these people a shot because I think a lot of them, again, have, you know, tried traditional published books. Like you hand somebody, you know, a Joe Abercrombie book. And I don't feel like that's a particular, you know, it's like wine, you know, you want to hand somebody a starter wine and I just think that, you know, when you have, when you're looking for different tastes in fantasy, I just personally feel like you said, like, I just think traditional publishing is, you know, publishing is kind of going on deaf ears, so to speak. And I know it is for me. And I just, I'm really enjoying indie fantasy and sci-fi. And I think there's just so many people like yourself that, you know, are doing great things and creating great stories. And I love having to go to my shelf and I can't pick a book, you know, because there's just like, like, who do you pick from? You know, like you feel like you're trying to pick your favorite child and, you know, it's kind of hard at times, you know, and I think, um, yeah, I think the genre, I was just talking to um, uh, Sean Crow about this too. I think the genre is really, you know, just indie in general, it's just really bringing itself up and Absolutely. it's just doing an amazing job now. Again, the, the quality is so different from a few years back. I mean, when the, the Amazon boom first kicked off, the vast majority of the stuff the quality just wasn't there the editing wasn't there but everything is so polished now yeah. and there's no real good argument against it at this point I, I totally agree scott and i were just talking about that um last weekend like you know you you know you look at you know like mark's book right like he's got felix doing the cover it's amazing you know and you go in and you know i don't know i just feel like i used to go into these indie books and you know no offense but like you know maybe like six or seven years ago and you know, there's so many spelling mistakes or editing mistakes or, you know, the character development wasn't there. But now it's like you literally it just seems like people are traditionally published authors publishing in indie. And Absolutely. you really can't tell, you know, if you put any of your guys' books on that shelf, you know, with traditional publish, you would not be able to tell the difference cover, you know, or, you know, um, the description on the back you know, advertisements, you know, things like that. I just feel that, you know, it's really brought itself up and everybody's done a really great job of making it a very, very competitive market, um, but Absolutely. also a really fun community that's, you know, like Sean Bell and I were talking about last night. It's like, you know, it's great to talk to people like yourself on Twitter or, you know, here and, you know, just, you know, get to flow different ideas. And I've learned a lot today. So thank you so much. And, you know, no, I just no. think that it's a totally different, um, it's a totally different, different beast than it used to be. And, yeah, it's, and I, I actually, it was interesting for me because I actually met a lot of indie authors um, with Brandon Sanderson, Patrick Rothfuss, and Kevin Hearn, um, and Michael J. Sullivan years ago, about eight years ago, and um, I met guys at the same, um, at the Poison Pen, this event with uh, you know, guys like, you know, Brian McKellen, um, Sam Sykes, uh, just like a bunch of different people, um, and it was really cool, you know, and it was very interesting, like Brian McKellen was really cool to talk to. Um, in particular, and, you know, he was just discussing with, um, I forget who the other, oh, uh, like Brian Stavely was there, and, you know, just to talk to them about, you know, just, you know, what they're doing in general, and then to see how well they've done, you know, in the meantime, and how well the community's done, it's really mm -hmm. cool, it's almost like, you know, I'm, like, I'm looking at a student of mine that's grown up, you know, and is becoming really successful, and it's, it's a great feeling, really, to see, you know, just everybody doing such a great job, and, you know, producing these great quality works it's it's really cool for me personally so absolutely all right so with this next one um so you said so i said on goodreads maybe i misread it because uh in the last couple of days were nuts but i just want to make sure so you have been an editor before then i've um if if there's a dirty job that needed done in the publishing <laughs> industry i've done it it's uh, i've been an editor i've been a critic I've, I've done them all so yeah i i i was an editor for a um a magazine for a few years oh, and then wow. a small press after that but that kind of collapsed under its own weight before it got going so <laughs> problem solved there <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well i was curious if you had um you know any particular you know thing that you learned from that perspective from being on the other side of the table so to speak uh, in terms of like the editor perspective i mean it's definitely helped with the quality of my writing um immensely because having to pick through the same mistakes in other people's writing what's 
what you're blind to in your own stuff is very easy to pick out in someone else's. And then when you start catching yourself doing the same thing, it's a lot easier to go, oh, actually, hang on, I don't need to say very for the 150th time this page. We're good. <laughs> And I mean, that's just on the very basic technical side of things. When, you, when you're talking yeah. about story structure and all the rest of it, you, you definitely absorb a lot when you're, well, I mean, obviously you're a teacher, you know that you learn as much teaching as you do. Oh, <laughs> when yeah, you talk. So sitting there on the other side of the desk, going through stories, it, yeah, it was definitely a learning experience. It's also been absolutely amazing for if I'm ever sending out submissions, because I know that if an editor sends me back a note saying no thank you I shouldn't continue to email them for six months afterwards constantly slightly adjusting the story saying hey how about now hey how about now hey how about now yeah, yeah. I'm sorry buddy I'm never going to buy your chupacabra sex story it's never going to happen <laughs> I was being polite go away <laughs> the characters are so great <laughs> I literally saw a um um one of those um Oh, totally blank on who it was now. Um, but somebody had, you know, put a message like that, that like they were just like sleeping and somebody was bugging them about, you know, their book. And then it was literally like nine hours later, they got probably like 64 texts from this person and like just completely assault, like verbally assaulting them. And I was just like, I would never do that to somebody. <laughs> like, I can't imagine, first of all, like privately messaging somebody and sending your manuscript. Like to me, that just is atrocious. I just think you know, you need to do it in a professional manner. And it's just, it's crazy really to think that, you know. Well, I think that's it. I think being on the other side, the, on the other foot definitely teaches you the value of the professionalism because the number of people that I just wouldn't work with anymore after having to deal with them once. And I'm not even talking about like, I'm, I'm talking about people who have now gone on to like win world fantasy awards and shit. Oh, wow. Who I have just never want to deal with after having to deal yeah. with them as an editor in there. Yeah, that's so, I, yeah, I just think, you know, I think a lot of people forget that aspect, you know, like. Well, this yeah. is it. It's, it's not that bit, like, there aren't that many magazines out there. Everyone talks to each other. It's not, yeah, yeah. Gonna, this is a community. You're going to screw yeah. yourself, you know? Yeah. Well, that's what, like, you know, this one editor is saying. She was, he, the, the person was basically like, you're never going to work in this town again. And she was like, no, you're never going to write in this town again after, like, you know, like, you know, verbally assaulting. I mean, it was really bad. I mean, she only put up like a couple, you know, she's like, usually I don't put these things up and she blocked the person's name out. But I was just like, she goes, I just want to see, you know, show people what we go through. I was just like, my goodness. I was like, yeah, I could never, could never. It's like talking back to a teacher, like my parents would have killed me. And I just couldn't imagine, you know, doing something like that or, you know, or, you know, like we had a couple of things that go on in the game today where I was at, where I was like, I would never act that way, you know, on a field, a court or whatever. And, yeah, I would never, Again. never message, I would never verbally assault someone, period, let alone, you know, somebody that, you know, I've never met before. Like, that's just like. As I keep saying to my kids, some people just aren't raised right. So. <laughs> yeah, that is very, very true. I was just talking about that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this uh, second to last one here. I was curious. Now I'm really curious after um, our conversation today. So. Uh, who are some authors or what are some of their books that you would recommend to our audience? Right. Are you looking for some lit RPG stuff? Really just anything that comes to mind for you. A lot of people just kind of said random people and they've been some really, really great recommendations that people have liked. So really anybody that comes to mind for you. It's okay. I'm going to pull up my list of all my books. I've been oh, reading for you. <laughs> um, I will say Will White's new book has uh -huh. literally just come out and it's... Uh, yeah, everyone, everyone should really go and read Cradle if they haven't already. I got the first three ready and raring to go after I get done with my um, next three indie reads, so I'm really excited. Oh, I, I can't get over how good it is. I really can't. <laughs> it's, again, it's what, very much a popcorn book, but the way you get hooked and you care about the characters and you care about absolutely everything, it's it's amazing. I'm so glad you said that, because like I said, those are my kind of books. So I'm like really excited now. I like to just read fun things where it's like, you know, it's really cool. It's interesting. And you, you know, you get good characters and you just kind of, you know, go, I don't even mind if it's episodic, to be honest. I just, yeah. So I'm, I'm glad you said that because at first I was kind of hesitant, but quite a few people have said the same thing. So yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> oh, de definitely the way to go. Um, another great one, if you've never read Lit RPG before, is um, what's the, uh, the, it's called This Trilogy is Broken, but the first one I think is called This Quest is Bullshit. And it's by oh, JP cool. Valentine. 
and it's very sort of light on all the statistical stuff that you get a lot of in lit RPG and the story is just really fun and upbeat and you're just gonna have a great cool. time with it. That sounds awesome. Uh, Actually, I just added that to my Goodreads the other day. I feel like that's the one. <laughs> the author sounds very familiar. Yeah, that that's I, I I've been yelling about it for a good few months, so I'd hope that it's, it's something oh, for awesome. somebody. <laughs> <laughs> um Oh, the, the one I mentioned earlier, the Cobalt Necromancer trying to make money oh, for yeah, school. Yeah. That was uh, Extra Credit by J. Arthur Klein. Oh, that's cool. I'll have to write that down. Uh, uh, Jonathan Smith is a uh, one of my publishing friends from Portal Books. He, his uh, Dungeon Core online books are coming out at the moment. He um, had run it as a serial first, and then he was oh, cool. bringing them out book by book now. So that's, uh, I think the second one's just about to come out and they're just so much fun and awesome. right off the deep end of goofy and stupid. I mean, you're going to have a great time with that. Oh, that's well. awesome. <laughs> I feel like I need that right now. <laughs> um, this, okay, Lotus Lake by Jay Boyce is one of my favorite lit RPG, but it's not as fantasy and active as a lot of the other ones are it's it's definitely leans more into the sort of slice of life while you're playing a video game kind of vibe oh, cool. it's i don't know it just it, i found it really soothing hmm. and it's strange to say that about a book but i was just i you just sort of sank into it and it was just relaxing the whole way through it was nice and i need that nowadays <laughs> like, yep my buddy just said, think... like buddy he goes man you, you, you really need to just kind of low down and he actually we were, i just saw him at the game um, i was working so yeah i said he said he goes i think you so you're getting a little grumpy because you're probably not reading as much i said it's just been hard so i think that that definitely sounds like sounds like my kind of speed right now <laughs> um the other one that's absolutely going nuts at the moment is uh dungeon caller carl by matt dinneman <laughs> you'll, you'll probably have a good time with that that's um that's sort of the world ends, but as it turns out, it's ending by game show. So uh, cool. he, he's, uh, it, the writing's really fun. It's a joke every page. You're yeah. just going to chuckle your way through. Oh, that's awesome. And I'm also legally obliged to recommend everything by Alex Knight and Demi Harper, because they're my buddies. <laughs> that's fair. Oh, and um, the like the father of the genre is Luke Shemlenko. Uh, here's the Send Online books. You want to read those. And I'm not just saying that because I co-write with him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he sees this later, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I if I get a little thumbs up from him later on today, I think it's I think it might be his birthday as we're recording. I'm not sure. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So happy birthday, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday. Either now or later. At some point, whenever the show's up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that that should be a good little set to get you started with it. Oh, and if awesome. any of the yeah. If, if any of them don't work for you, then there's plenty, there's so many more to hop over. Yeah. Just tell me what you're liking about it. Come back to me, ping me on Twitter. I'm happy to make recommendations cool. to anybody. Oh, and that, that that's not just you, that's anyone that's listening as well. I'm happy to just jump on. Excellent. Well, I really appreciate that. I'm coming up with um, one of the things I'm doing the next couple of weeks is uh, actually putting the list together. Um, and then I'm actually going to be putting on my website and a couple other places like our Facebook group and things like that. So people can actually go and actually look at it. And then we'll just start to add um, based off of new people's recommendation. Um, so we'll actually do it in like kind of like an episodic sort of thing. Um, so you can look up episode and then people can actually look up your name and then actually see the recommendations. Um, oh, we had a couple of people that mentioned kind of the same thing for the Wizards, Warriors and Words uh, crew um, when mm -hmm. they did their recommendations. And I thought, you know what, that's kind of a cool thing. So Hopefully yeah, that's a good that, idea. yeah, I just thought, you know, and at the very least, at least I get to do it. So for myself, so that I get a really good list of books and I can, um, you know, use it as a, um, oh, you know, I employ my wife to get more books because it's for the podcast. So I have to. You've got to. It's for work. Really. <laughs> yeah, it's for work. On, yeah. You got to write it off as a business expense now. So I'm totally <laughs> with that. I keep winning now, gift cards like this. I should be OK. So You should be fine. <laughs> but another important thing to remember, if anyone is still on the fence about writing lit RPG, you can start charging video games as a business expense. Oh, that's, that's actually really cool. You guys yeah. are here first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if the IRS will agree, but um, we, we've been doing yeah. it and getting away with it for a while now. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> uh, are there any news promos or updates or anything like that they have right now? Oh, let me think. Let me think. Um, 
depending on when this comes out, the third book of Savage Dominion might be out. That's the, the book series I'm writing with uh, Luke Jumlanko. And that's quite a lot of fun. That's, uh, that's one of these isekai fancy trapped in another world thing. They've got this huge epic fancy plot going on. And unfortunately, the person they've got there to be the hero is a himbo. Oh, cool. So he, he's a complete idiot, staggering through, headbutting everything. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right that's really uh so that, that's probably the next thing i had out the last thing i had out was the third and final book of my witch of empire trilogy which was um the urban fantasy stuff but it's less urban fantasy and it's more film noir with wizards um <laughs> oh that's really cool that's such a cool description <laughs> <laughs> I, I think like the, lately <laughs> I, I think the original description was um a body hopping serial killer versus a furious lesbian witch detective. So that's <laughs> gonna write that down. I'll probably have to get that one uh, for <laughs> that just sounds really, really cool. Well, there's three of them now, and there is a small demonic doll in two of them. So you'll probably have fun with that as well. Oh, that's really cool. He's been very popular, like un eerily popular, that one. And I <laughs> It gets it gets so much worse when I'm at conventions and things, and there's kids, and someone asks me about it, and I have to explain. No, actually, it's based off a real haunted doll that we've got down in Florida. <laughs> oh wow, that's crazy! And then I show the kids the picture of the haunted doll, and they cry. It's a great time. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I'm definitely gonna have to check that one out. I was actually looking at that on Goodreads last night, actually, um, before uh, Sean and I um, started our interview. So. I'm really glad that you said that it was urban fantasy um, and kind of like that route because I hadn't gotten that far yet uh, in the description. So that actually sounds really, really good to me. I'm on an urban fantasy kick lately um, and definitely uh, definitely had a little bit of a drought on that. I was trying some other things. So I have to check that yeah, out. Yeah, there has not been enough urban fantasy around lately. I've, I've been missing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. I was writing a lot myself because I think I was, you know, just um i've been trying to save the jim butcher books and you know and try to you know kind of portion them off a little bit i read iron druid loved them patricia briggs i read all of hers and there were some other people too on my shelf that i just blew through um that i'm blanking on right now and yeah like orlando sanchez is one of those people too where i'm going to try and check out his i think he's got like 10 or something like that um they yeah, all sound really interesting and fun so yeah but definitely oh. need more though it's been my new favorite thing so Oh, hang on. I've got some recommendations for that as well, then. <laughs> Daniel Jose Older's um, Bone Street Rumba books. The, um, it takes a little bit of time to get into the rhythm of the writing, but mm -hmm. once you are, they're just fantastic. And um, Gail Carringer's books, they're um, sort of Victorian setting. Oh, cool. And it's got a lot of that same sort of almost comedy of manners stuff going on while they're fighting vampires. It's, it's a good time. <laughs> That's awesome. I've been I've been really looking into the yeah like um I like the the urban fantasy uh, time period kind of thing so like Scott Odin's uh like um oh gather ravens um mm. which I'm about to start after I'm done with Clayton's and I forget I got so I think I got, got Mark uh, uh Timothy's blood of the spear um in between there but it's like yeah I I don't know I I would really really want to do something um I was watching the Last Kingdom and I love Bernard Cornwell and I was like looking into these other um. Oh, and I'm reading, you know, Mal's in Book of the Fallen, and uh, we got to one book, I think it was Midnight Tides, and I just loved the um, Iron Bars, like, character, and it's very, like, Romanesque, you know, like, uh, Legion, um, and, like, just, like, the, like, the smaller chunk, which I'm totally blank on what it's called, um, and, like, these Legionnaires, and I was, like, oh, I really want to do that mixed with, like, uh, I want to take the Lost Legion and have them being lost because they got decimated by zombies. <laughs> um, and I'm a history teacher, so I'm doing a lot of research on the Lost Legion, the time period, uh, Rome, you know, just like Roman military, stuff like that. Um, so that's going to be like my baby. And I'm going to start to do that um, in the summer, just a little bit in between just the straight fantasy stuff. But yeah, well, I, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, well, I've been they... really into the time period. <laughs> urban fantasy. The Especially thing is, that, I mean, they're pretty well equipped to deal with zombies, the long spears, the shields. They right? should do all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I think my friend, he goes, well, how many are you going to have survive? I said, well, the thing is, I said, when you're thinking of that region, I'm like, you know, in the time period, I said, they could have gotten lost, you know, in the north with the picks. I'm like, you know, there's just so many things that could have happened. And basically what I want to happen by the end is like, you know, by book three is like, they just get decimated. And 
you know, by the end and, you know, like throughout the trilogy. And then you just have like a core surviving group. And basically they kind of like, you know, kind of like scattered to the wind, so to speak. So we don't hear from them again. Um, I think that's the thing that's really helped me up the most is I'm like, you know, with like the ending for the trilogy and things. Um, but yeah, I just, it's like, just been like a fun little project. And um, Mark and I were talking about it. He's like, well, maybe that's the thing you should do now after this, you know, this other book. So um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But I definitely okay. like the time period. Yeah. Looking forward to reading that one. That sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping I just, again, I just, uh, you know, like my friend, I said, I just, he goes, you just want popcorn books. I'm like, yep. And that's what I like to read. And that's what I like to write. So <laughs> maybe I can give you guys a little popcorn logo just so people know that, you know, it's a popcorn book. So <laughs> <laughs> perfect. All right. Well, I really want to thank you coming on today. I, you know, I've been talking to you on Twitter for a long time. So I was really, um, I've seen a lot of things that you put up and I really liked. So, and I liked your perspective a lot. So I really appreciate, you know, you bringing that perspective today. Uh, I know our audience is really going to enjoy it as well. Like I said, we were really looking forward to having somebody with a the RPG background and, you know, a lot of the other things you bring to the table. Um, really offer a fresh perspective on some things that we've been talking about in here for a while. So again, really want to thank you for coming on. Uh, everybody that's tuning in, uh, make sure you check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Um, the audio is on Spotify. My um, tech guy, David, is amazing. So he was able to help me figure out those snafus and things. Uh, feel free to reach us at our email. It's going to be in the Spotify link as well as the description on YouTube. It is Scholars of Uma, that's U-M-A at gmail.com. Uh, let us know what you liked about this episode. If you have any questions for GD that I can pass along. Um, any book recommendations for either one of us or our audience just in general. Uh, if you have any questions for future guests, please make sure you email those to me. I'd love to see those. I've had a couple already, so that was really cool. Uh, and any videos or pictures that you have that are fantasy or sci-fi related, uh, feel free to send those to me as well. GD, I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. I'd uh, love to have you back in the future. We have a second part of season one uh, in the winter, um, or you know, if we get closer to you know your project, next project being out. Uh, love to have you on again so we can help you with promos and things like that. But really want to thank you for coming on today. Um, you've been awesome. So um, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I had a ball. Um, I'm glad that we finally managed to line up our yeah, calendar so I can actually talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling my wife, I was like, I swear, I was like, if I cannot get home for this interview, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like break down and cry. I was like, I've been trying. <laughs> I was like, and you know, I, she knows that I don't get to talk to a lot of the, you know, this you know, lit RPG community. And she was like, oh, like, come on. I'm like, I know. I'm like, so yeah, when we were finding out, I had to cover today. I was like, so you're going to make it in time. I was like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to race home. So that's what I did. So yeah, I'm very so glad what, what, to, be able to work it out. So thank uh, you so much, my friend. I, I hope I was worth all the speeding tickets and I'd be uh, delighted to come back again. Anytime excellent, you want. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I will be uh, sending you um, the calendar for this episode, uh, and I will actually be um, updating our calendar and sending out possible dates for the winter and the spring. So that'd be perfect. Okay, ideal. Excellent. Thank you so much, and Not I hope you have a good you. rest of the day. You too. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Cheerio.